Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Send me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So y'all, yeah, I've uh, you know, I've done a little bit of that. I was ate at a wonderful, at a wonderful Chinese restaurant. It was, it was incredible food, you know. Smoked a little bit before, and then drank a little bit after that. So I'm I'm in a real mood right now. I'm feeling real, real good. So I want to come at you guys with some more content. Probably gonna have to do a lot of editing on this one because it's probably gonna be a little too raunchy for YouTube. Uh, we shall see. <laughs> but anyway, I'll please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. Want to entertain you? Let's jump right in. Alarm, Jan, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. He steps away suddenly, letting me go. I am broken from my heated trance, almost losing my balance. What? Huh? Loken? What is it? The drums reach a crescendo and blast into a deafening rhythm. The dancers abandon all sense of rhythm and order. Piece by piece, they strip what remains of their clothes and throw them into the fire. It is too loud. Oh! Want to move somewhere else? Water. Now! The hound abruptly staggers off through the crowd, leaving me, leaving me perturbed and concerned. Loken, hey, wait up! I follow Loken as he hurriedly leaves the crowded square. I called him several times, but he ignores me and carries on marching away from the indulgence. We end up in the opposite district of the farms, where it's much easier, where it's much quieter. The hound drops to his knees by one of the water taps built into the wooden huts. With zero hesitation, he turns it on and plunges his head beneath the billowing stream of cold water. I wince, keeping my distance as droplets splash me. After a few moments of dowsing his entire face, he sits back and leans against the wall, panting. His head fur is absolutely dripping. I approach him cautiously, concerned. He runs his paw through his waterlogged fur. I am wet. He shakes his head madly, spraying droplets in every direction. I bring my hands up to my face to defend myself. But hey, watch it, hound! I laugh at his antics. He eventually stops flailing and leans back and leans his head back against the wooden hut. I sit beside him, eyebrows raised in worry. It got pretty loud back there, huh? Hmm. It is better here, with you. Leaning against the wall next to him, I lightly pet his upper arm to try and comfort him as I usually do. I just feel that is feeling good. You like having your arm rubbed? I do. Have you got any other spots? Spots? Places you like to be petted? Hmm. He seems hesitant at first. I'm about to offer him some reassurance, but then I hear his throat rumble with an affirmative with an affirmative content. He takes my hand in his own and places it gingerly behind his own ears. I laugh. Ear rubs, huh? Who'd have thought? With a firm grasp, I dig my furs behind his wet ear and give it a firm scratch. His eyes roll backwards and he smiles in angelic bliss. His flexible ears bounce back bounce back every time my fingers grace them. I weave my fingers into his waterlogged head fur, checking for his reaction. Wow. His throat thunders with happy growls. His mouth is very slightly ajar. Do not stop. I can't stop myself chuckling. He's loving this. Who would have thought he could be such a puppy? You're so cute. His eyes flicker open, scanning me up and down. Little human. Oh no. He tugs me closer. I up and end up kneeling next to him. Just short of sitting in his lap, I put my hands on his chest to support myself. My face is level with his muzzle. I realize suddenly how rare it is for us to be at the same height like this. Hey there, big guy. Alex, there's nobody here else here. <laughs> nope. His paw settles against my side gently, fingers kneading into my abs through the top through my top, unable to resist touching him. I tentatively reach for his sculpted stomach. Can I pet you here? Mm-hmm. His, pet, his pelt is thicker here, becoming fluffier as it goes down his belly button and further. You're soft. His paw tightens around my waist, and he pulls our midsections together, our eyes locked together. Do, um... Get some more of this alcohol, y'all. Yeah, one second. Ooh. Medella Dark. Ooh. That's some good bear. It's not Foster's. For Australian for bear. Do you guys kiss? The hound takes the hint and leans closer. He's, he bumps his his nose bumps slightly against mine first, and I twist my head ever so slightly to fit the shape of his muzzle. It feels odd, feeling my cheeks brush against his face fur. At first, it's slow and steady, like two hands nervously joining fingertips. Just the simple, soft pulse of his warm lips against mine, despite the canine design of his face, it somehow works. I feel the coarse vibrations of his chest as he growls. 
His fingers dig into my side and he kisses me again. I watch the serene... I match the serene flow of his lips. It's so good! I never imagined... I never imagined he'd be such a good kisser. Given the shape of his muzzle, I didn't think he'd be able to kiss me at all, even gently like this. He pulls away from me, but then nudges his snout into my cheek and inhales deeply. Bathing in the moment, I shut my eyes and lean my head against his snout. Alex. Yeah? You are a good human. <laughs> you too. I feel his paws move behind me and slide down. He helps as I grasp my backside again. His chest vibrates lustfully. I want this. <laughs> my butt? Yes. Out of nowhere, Luca twists his snout down to my neck and laps his tongue across my cheek. I flung tussle him weakly off, snickering. Ah, you and your tongue! You are tasting good to me. Planning to make me your next meal? I am planning that. Wow, that look has such an intense power over me. Alex, you are ready to return to the indulgence? Are you sure? It was pretty loud. I am sure. We will sit together by the fire. Ah, yeah, that sounds nice. Might give your head a chance to dry, too. Hmm, come. His paw finds my shoulder and guides him. He guides me to he guides me from the floor and back to the indulgence. We don't speak. I just lean against him softly. Uh oh. By the time we return, the village square is illuminated only by the auburn glow of the bonfire. Shrouded by opaque darkness, the indulgence has reached its peak. Oh god. Groups have formed where men and women have given totally into the debauchery, with very little art or civility in the act. It's ferociously animal. Hear the depraved feral bang of bipeds in the throes of the moment. See entwined furry furred bodies tangled in a torrent of passion, barely visible in the dim light. No words are spoken, only howls, growls, and snarls. Snarls, snarls. Those getting senselessly pounded are mostly on their hands and, knee and, hands and knees, furiously slammed by frenzied breeding partners. It's all liquefied by the burning, tropical aura of the bonfire. As Loken casually leads me closer to the flames, it's hard not to feel swept up in all this condensed, searing passion. The hound sits cross-legged in front of the fire. He closes his eyes. I can't tell if he's ignoring it all or absorbing it. Sheepishly, I sit, by, I sit beside him. I sit beside him. This is really something. My knees bump against his. Husky's white fur is tinged with orange. I see the hint of a smile on his muzzle. I open my mouth to speak, but I'm briefly distracted by the sound of someone climaxing behind me loudly. You guys really don't hold back. Loken shuffles a little closer to me, then lifts his arm over my shoulders and pulls me warmly into a sideways grasp. Smiling happily, I nestle beneath his arm. The heat of his body and the bonfire in front of us melts through me like the waters of the hot spring. When the indulgence happens like this, I am alone. But I am not alone tonight. This is good. I am glad you are here with me, Alex. I am happy to be here with you too, Logan. My head falls slightly lightly against his chest. The hound looks, or looks around at the indulgence. The choir of pleasured cries. A tipping sight just washing over him. What time is it? Eight. Okay. We sit silently for a while, despite everything going on around us. You're really not bothered by all this? Hmm, it is not as loud as when the indulgence begins, but I have witnessed those these sights many times. Here we are, an affectionate cuddle by the fire, while everyone around us is breeding furiously like beasts in heat. And yet, I don't feel weird. Logan is with me. We're in this weird spot together at the indulgence, but not quite part of it. So, when you and Orion got together, you did it here, with everyone else? We did not. I preferred to be alone. He respected that. I don't blame you. I don't think I could even get nude in front of everyone. His ears... I see his ears flick pensively, and he narrows his eyes in deep thought. What? You are funny. Why? I am not shy like you. Huh, <laughs> come on, you'd be okay being nude in front of the whole clan, in front of Dravonia? Hmm, I would, even then. I don't know what comes over me when I immediately brought out my next thought. I don't believe you. You are thinking I am dishonest? You just don't seem like the type to get into all this. You're too... modest. He flinches, head cocking to the side. Then he shoots me the mischievous grin I'm growing to love. God, what are you? Quite suddenly, the hound pushes me away from him and gets up to his feet. He turns facing me. I blush my head at crotch level with it with him. Wait, I was kidding! With a teasing smirk, the hound grabs the strap around his chest and flicks it off. He tears it off and his leggings drop down to the ground. A gop, staring at the huskies, he sheds most of his clothing and stands before me, with only his loincloth clinging and clinging to him. He beams smugly at me, arms spread wide in challenge. A gulp, soaking in the sight of him, my cheeks turning red. You still believe I am modest? Uh... What the hell's gotten into him? This is the last place I expected him to get playful with me. 
Not that I'm complaining. I like it when he's having fun. It's so rare. It's even funnier given where we are. Caught up in his weird sense of humor, I smirk and point coyly to his loincloth. Well, technically, you're still wearing that, so... Husky folds his arms impishly at me. This is a ruse, Alex. You only wish to see me undress. Hey, you're the one starting started stripping in front of me, big guy. If you wish to look at me, then you must undress first. That is the game. I narrow my eyes, gesturing at the scene around us. I am not exposing my bare human ass to this lot while they're, mid while they're all mid-pork. Aside from anything else, I play it. If I play his game, would I really, would I really, would I really be ready for him to see me naked? Then you are a modest coward, I glare. What did you just call me, dog? He steps closer, baring his teeth playfully. A coward, human. You will not undress, but I will. So I'm the winner of this game. Oh, hell no. It's on, mutt. Fine. I don't know if it's the spirit of the indulgence or more likely feeling more comfortable around him than I ever have before. In defiance, I jump up in front of him and in my in front of him with my top off and my top off, throwing it aside. I stand bare chested, glaring proudly up at the grinning husky. No, you are still clothed. I can't believe I'm doing this. Determinedly, I fix I fix my eyes to his, tug the waistband of my leggings loose. With a flick of my legs, I let them fall to the ground and stand, butt ass naked in front of Loken. Caught up in the heat of the moment, I just spread my arms and glare challengingly at the hound the satisfied grin, copying his earlier gesture. There! Behold! The last human dick! For a moment, he stares, shocked. Then I see his eyes, captivated by me. His chest begins to rumble, and his teeth glint in the firelight. You look good like this, Alex. I feel my face burn, arms folding over my chest indignantly. It's not like you haven't seen it before. Come on, your turn. Oaken's eyes narrow confidently. He hooks a thumb around the hem of his loincloth and tugs it off. Ha oh. Oh. Well, fuck. He's gorgeous. We make eye contact, and I see his upper jaw quiver in a hungry snarl. Oh, excuse me. Uh, hey there, big guy. Little human. So? Now you are as I want you. Just as he takes a step closer. <clears throat> With Loken and I whirl around in shock. Javoni is standing right there, arms crossed in amusement. A faint smirk carved across her face. I immediately make a vain effort to cover myself. Ah, Chief! Ah, Chief! Having fun? Yes. I frown at Loken. He doesn't seem at all at phase standing in front of her with his junk out. Silly boy. In fact, he steps over to me and once again curls an arm around my shoulder. I'm tugged back into his sideways embrace. My whole naked body is pressed against his. I want to enjoy it, but the Chief is right there. Oh fuck! We we were um we were just maze messing around. I stumble over my words, burning beneath the chief's amused judgment. Alex is proving to me that he is not modest. I no 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 I no I wasn't. It, 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 uh, fuck. Javoni rolls her eyes. I see. Well, well, ma well. Point made. Alex is not modest. I'll leave you both to it. Loken, try and be respectful. Chief. The saber-toothed tiger turns back, turns her back to us, chuckling softly, then leaves us standing there, naked and flustered by the bonfire. I frown up at Loken. Why did she say that? We are misbehaving at the indulgence. It is disrespectful. I snort. Because we're nude at an orgy? We are mocking the indulgence. Should we get changed again, then? Loken's arm tightens around me. Once again, I am rocked by the happy vibrations of his aroused growl. I snicker, nestling beneath, my, beneath his arm. No. Lickin lowers his muzzle to my shoulder and he smears his tongue fondly across my cheek again. Hey, hey, is licking a hound thing? It is. So, I'll expect regular tongue baths from you? Tongue baths? Yeah, um, <clears throat> never mind. Hmm, okay. I almost, I've almost completely tuned out the ravenous orgy taking place around us. All I care about is him and his embrace. Alex. Y yeah? Kiss. I chuckle fondly, then turn to face him and replace my hands flat against his bare chest. He leans down. Given our height difference, he needs to learn. He needs to lean down quite a bit, but he manages. His muzzle tilts to the side and her lips lock together again. It's just as wonderful as it was before. This time, his kiss is greedier. I hear his eager growls and I feel his paws sliding to my sides. Feeling his nude, furred body against mine is amazing. The silken brush of his pelt and the firm bump of his sheath prodding against my belly. To my surprise, I feel his huge, flat tongue slide against my mouth. Damn, he can be a messy kisser! 
Not that I mind, I push my smaller tongue against his. Logan eventually pulls his muzzle away, holding onto me tightly. Alex. Yeah? We'll return home now. I blink, surprised. Really? I wish to be alone with you. Heh, <laughs> I wonder what his intentions are. I think that I like the sound of that. As interesting as the night's events have been, I'm far more taken by everything that's happened between Logan and I, but how far will I want things to go? Still ignoring the raucous orgy taking place around us, Logan and I fumble around our forehead for our clothes and hurriedly put them back on. I'm disappointed to see him clothed again, but I suspect he plans to tear them right off as soon as we're back at the lodge. Nobody pays us any mind as we leave the indulgence. The heat of the bonfire behind us fades away. Side by side, he wordlessly exits the crowded village streets and heads towards the forest. He has his arm around my shoulders. I lean my head against his side, enjoying his warmth against the chill of the alpine breeze. However, just before we reach the lodge, his mood drastically and suddenly changes. Alex. Yeah? You. Hmm. Are you okay? I am. Tell me. But he doesn't but he doesn't tell me anything. He just looks sad and I frown. Loken, talk to me. I do not know. I frowned, concerned. It seems to have come from nowhere. I didn't say anything. We were just walking home silently. We stopped walking. He's staring straight ahead, unsure how to reach him. Unsure of how to reach him, I just pet his arm comfortingly. Take your time. He doesn't reply for a long time. You are There's another long pause. Meaning it? Meaning what? Meaning it. Tonight, you are... Meaning it? Poor guy can barely string a sentence together when he's anxious, but I think I understand. Loken. He finally looks down at me. You're a good hound, and I like you. I mean it. You are certain. He really does need constant reassurance. I'm not going anywhere. You're stuck with me, big guy. Hmm. After another long stretch of silence, I eventually feel his tail wagging. You are also stuck with me. I slide my hand up to his paw. He takes it, and my small hand is encapsulated by his. So, what happens next? Hmm? After tonight, will we still... He frowns for a moment, and looks away. The indulgence will end. Oh. But I had fun. Hmm, I also enjoyed this night. So let's not stop. Logan catches my uncertain look and grunts. It would not be proper. There's a pause. You know how many people did things on their own terms? We could... Try that? This would not upset you? As long as it doesn't upset you. Hmm, I also want more. Despite his assurances, he still looks away anxiously. But what if we had another indulgence, just for us? We can't have one every day. The clan would judge us. And we won't tell them. It's not like we're in love or anything. We'd just be having fun, right? Alex, I do not think... Hmm. He's really not comfortable with this. I should... I, sh I shouldn't push him out of his comfort zone, and I... Sh I shouldn't push him out of his comfort zone. It's not his way. Well, um, whatever happens, the night isn't over yet, is it? Alright, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Got a little bit of, uh, ooh, got a little bit of naked Logan. Mm-mm. Mamacita. Oh, anyway, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. And guys, more than ever, super ti uh, super thanks and tips are more appreciated more than ever now that I am far, far, far away from home and uh, paying, uh, you know, spending a lot more money. So, whatever you whatever you guys can give, I, I deeply appreciate it. But anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>